Hello, in this video we will make a basic Hello World program of ESP8266 board. So we will learn the setup, installation and drivers and everything. But we will also learn how to write and run a very basic program on your ESP8266. We will basically use two LEDs and we will turn them on and off. And I will also explain you the code so that at the end of this video you can add as many LEDs as you want to your circuit and your code and you can customize it to whatever pattern you want. So let's get started. First of all, let's see what do you need for this tutorial. You need an ESP board, of course, ESP8266. You need two LEDs, two resistors, basically uh, greater than 200 ohms. Greater than 200 ohms are enough so that your uh, LEDs won't burn. Um, obviously, if you, if you uh, put some resistors with very large resistance, your LEDs won't be as bright as, as they should be. So try to keep in this range, otherwise just greater than 200 will work. Um, some wires and of course a breadboard. So this uh, setting, the, the, the setup of your ESP8266 is divided into very basic six steps. I've divided it into six steps for this tutorial so that it's easy for you to follow. So step number one is download and install the Arduino IDE. So we will basically use the IDE of Arduino for uh, programming on this board. All right. Step number two is installing the ESP8266 add-on for the Arduino IDE. The third step is selecting your board as ESP8266 in the board manager. And that's it. Now the next step is writing your code. Now after writing the code, we will set the COM port. And after that, we will upload the code or which is also called a sketch. We will upload the sketch to ESP. Now step number one, two, three, and five. They are one time. You just have to configure all of this once. And when you will write your code again and again and write different programs, this part writing the code or making changes to your code and this part uploading to your ESP that has to be repeated. All right, now well, let's get started. There is one more additional step that we have to perform and that is driver installation. So let's see how to do that. Uh, make sure that your ESP is connected to your laptop before you are installing this driver. Don't do it without connecting the ESP. Now there are many drivers on the internet for ESP. These are the ones I have used and tested. I'm gonna share their link with you as well in the description. So just extract them here and open up the folder, this one. Double click on these, give it the permissions and just click on install, it's very easy. That's it, just click here. I have already installed them, so I'm not gonna do that again. But this is the button, just click it and you are good to go. And that's it. Before you hit any errors, let me give you two good tips. So always use a good data cable to connect your ESP and never use a charging cable. So try to use an original one which is capable of transmitting the data. And if your ESP is not showing in your laptop or your PC, so the first thing you should do is try changing the cable or checking your USB port if it's working or not. Try changing the cable, that works, that always works. So hopefully it's not another big issue. Uh, usually it's the cable. And the second thing is before installing the driver that we just did, connect your ESP to your laptop. Do not do it without connection without connecting your ESP. Now let's quickly perform all the steps we just saw. To download the Arduino IDE, open up your browser and type Arduino IDE download. You'll get the first link, click it, and you'll see different options, whether you are on Windows, Mac, or Linux. So choose ac accordingly. If you are in Windows, you can either go with the installation, complete installation, or you can use the pre-installed version in the zip file. I'm gonna go with this one, click it, this is the download button, download it, and let's open it. The download is complete. This is the pre-installed version. Extract it here. Now the file is extracted. Click here, double click here and your IDE will open up. Now that the first step is complete, we have to install the ESP8266 add-on for the Arduino IDE. Let's do that. And obviously for that, you have to open up your Arduino IDE. 
This is the Arduino integrated development environment. You can see two functions here, setup and loop. Now, first things first, we have to install the Arduino add-on, sorry, the ESP add-on. So for that, go to file and then preferences here. And here in the additional boards manager, you have to paste this link. I will share this link in the description of this video. I've already configured it. That's why it's here. Otherwise, when you will open up your uh, IDE, this field will be empty. So just paste this link here and then click OK. The next step is go to tools and in the board and then boards manager. Click on the boards manager and you will see that open up here. And here uh, we have to search for ESP. You can either type here uh, in this in this field or you can scroll down and search for ESP community there. ESP8266 by ESP8266 community. I have already installed it. That's why you can see that here. So just click on this button and install it. So it will be installed. Now we just have to choose our board in the boards manager to tell the IDE that we, we are writing code for this particular board. To choose the board, go to tools and board. And here you have to go inside ESP8266. By the way, if you haven't installed ESP, this option won't be appearing. So click here and then search for your ESP. So this is the version that I am using and I will be writing code for this version. So choose your version and that's it. That version will basically appear here. So this field uh, will be appearing as empty before this step in your system, in your IDE. Now let's write our code. This is the data sheet of ESP266 node MCU. So I will use two LEDs and I will connect them to these two ports, GPIO5 and GPIO4, these two ports. So you can see GPIO, general purpose, input, output. These ports can be used as input or outputs. And for now, we are using them as outputs, right? So remember port number four and port number five. We will make the circuit after writing the code. You can make the circuit before writing the code as well. The setup function will run just once and the loop function will run continuously on your ESP board. Now let's declare two variables to refer to our uh, ports, output ports. So output four, and later on we will be using these variables instead of writing the port numbers. You can avoid this step as well, but it's good to you know write uh, the port numbers once and then just use the variables. All right, now let's write the setup code. So there is one thing that you will always be writing in your ESP code that is serial.begin. So this function tells which frequency, which baud rate will it be using to communicate. I'm going to use this one for now. And this code must match the code in your serial monitor. And I will show you how later on. All right. So the next thing is let's make it sleep for 200 microseconds and then uh, whatever we write here serial dot print that will be printed on your serial monitor so uh, it is basically you know to, to if you know if you want to check something if you want to write something you want to see what's going on you can write that here so i'm just printing two new lines and nothing else you can you know write something as well inside something like that for the first step all right now we have to tell the mode of the pin we have to set that once so we are doing that in the setup so output 4 is or will be used as output and pin mode output 5 will be used as obviously again as output. we are using both the pins as output and also I'm gonna make the pins I'm gonna give them a zero or a low for now in the setup so you can write the uh, function digital write you can use that output four and then give it a low that means it will be off all right this was our setup so up till now, we declared two variables for the output pins. We declared the baud rate here, and then uh, we printed some stuff on the screen, on the serial monitor, and then we configured the pin mode of, the, of our pins, and then we 
gave a low uh, that is we switched them off we switched our LEDs off we gave a low to the output pins now let's write the code for our loop let's say we want to make a pattern where we switch one LED on and the other one off and then the other on and the first one off and so on so let's write code for that it's very simple obviously you you can see you can figure it out we just have to use these commands right just that I, I'll rather just copy it right so digital write and output for all right and then I want to switch it on if I want to switch it on I'm gonna write hi and let's say if I, if I am switching this one on I want to switch the other one off I'm gonna switch the output five off I, so I'm gonna give it a low right and then I'm gonna give a delay of half a second so if I write 1000 that's one second because it's these are microseconds so I'm gonna give a delay of half a second and then after half a second I want to invert it I want to switch off the first one and switch on the second one so this is what I'm gonna do right now after half a second the second LED will be on and the first one will be off that's what will happen and then I'm gonna make it sleep for another uh, half a second all right so this way it will be a pattern so for half a second the one one of them will be on the other one will be off and after that after, after half a second the other one will be on and the first one will be off and so on so this is this is it this is my code make sure to put semicolons at the end of all lines all right uh, that's it but um this this is what this will work but let's say you want to spice things up all right so you, what you can do is you can let's say make a count variable here and initialize it with zero and we can put an if here so let's say oh, before that before that we have to put count plus plus obviously we have to increment it so we can put an if here and let's say if count is less than let's say 10 all right whatever number you want to write you can write that here then run this code if it's less than 10 run this code otherwise let's say we want to speed up the process we don't want to wait for 500 microseconds that is we don't want to wait for half a second let's say we want to you know make it uh, look like a police siren or something like that we can do that so i'm gonna put all of this code again copy it put it here and you want to spice it up you want to make it fast so let's say make it 100 that means fraction uh, one by tenth of a second all right it will be really fast so for the first 10 times it's gonna uh, switch uh, slow uh, half a second delay and for the rest of the times it's gonna speed up after 10 uh, iterations it's gonna speed up and it will be really fast and it will just look cool that's it so now let's make the circuit and let's run our code so one more thing if you want to check you have written uh, an error free code and there are no errors you can always use this button for compiling or verifying i'm going to click this and i can see that it's compiling my sketch and if there is an error it will show me so it is saying there is an error here and you can clearly see what is the error. I have uh, written the wrong name of the variable, right? I had to write output five and I have written uh, O-U-P-U-T, right? So my mistake. Um, let's see if it is somewhere else as well. Yes, it must be here as well. No, that was the only instance. All right, let's verify it again. So if there are any errors, they will appear here. Otherwise, your code is fine. Okay, looks like it's fine. All right. So our code is ready to be uploaded. And by the way, we'll use this button to upload. So let's quickly make the circuit and then come back. This is our circuit diagram. And I will be connecting this port to the anode of this LED, the positive terminal of this LED. And the negative terminal goes to the resistor and then that goes into the ground. So this is the ground line. S similarly, for the second LED, this port that goes into the positive terminal of the LED, 
the negative terminal goes to the resistor and that again, again goes into the uh, ground and you can see G and D here this is the ground port that is connected here with the ground so I think you are already familiar that this line on a breadboard is connected it's interconnected all of these holes they are connected this is one wire you can say and these lines here here you can see uh, uh, they are drawn in green here right these lines here they are connected so here it is connected like this and here it is connected like this all right so this is the circuit diagram make the circuit and then we can upload our code circuit is complete you can see that my ESP is not yet connected let's connect our ESP and set the COM port so once you connect the data cable sorry for the noise once you connect the data cable with your uh, laptop port or, and your ESP it should give a blink right to and you can see that it, it is connected there as well and obviously here as well you can see uh, it's connected now so step number five is to just set up our COM port to select your COM port click here and select either this or this it will open up this panel for you this is the serial port that your ESP is connected to COM7 it can be different in your laptop right so whichever serial port your uh, ESP is connected to that will appear here and you have to select it and again for the boards let's write ESP here and the one we were using was node MCU node MCU 1.0 ESP 12e module this is the one I'm using so click that and then press OK the last step but not the least is to upload our code and run the code and the circuit all right let's see to upload your code to ESP click on this button here once you do that your sketch will start compiling and then it will upload so you can see it's uploading now you can see 23 percent is done and so on okay here you will see a serial monitor once this code is uploaded we will open this and whatever we were printing here remember that will be printed here in the serial monitor so the code is uploaded successfully completely let's open up the serial monitor make sure this frequency remember this baud rate that we set here before make sure that this baud rate is the same as this one okay we can see that the dots that we made it print and I can see the output on my circuit I can see the LEDs blinking I'm going to show you the output you can see that the two LEDs are switching on and off slowly for the first 10 iterations and the switching is faster after the 10th iteration that's how we programmed it also the red LED is switching on but it's not as bright enough as the blue one that's it guys I hope this tutorial was helpful as well as enjoyable I had fun making it so such tutorials take up a lot of effort in making so if you like it don't forget to give it a thumbs up I keep losing my motivation and and that's why there is there there are such long gaps between the videos so do comment to make me feel happy and make me feel motivated thank you so much for watching it